Hello second grade. So today we've talked about Native Americans and Native American art totem poles. Our learning objectives is that we'll explore the culture of Native American art and we'll know that totem pole designs represent important individuals and we're going to work collaboratively to create our own classroom totem pole. And so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get a small either colored paper or white paper. It's completely your choice. You get to decide. And then you're going to choose an animal that you want to draw. And I have all these how to draw books in the back of the room if you need help. But I want your animal to fill this paper. I want it to be as big as this paper. I want it to almost touch the top, almost touch the bottom, almost touch the right, almost touch the left of the paper. So you need to draw very, very big. And you're going to choose an animal any animal that you like and then you're going to draw it filling the paper. Then you're going to outline with black permanent marker no matter if you use colored paper or white paper. And then I want you to erase any pencil lines that are poking out. So please notice how my bird fills the paper. It touches, it literally touches the bottom of the paper. It almost touches the top. It almost touches the left. Um, it doesn't quite reach the right, but this is nice, a nice big animal that fills my paper. So if you choose colored paper, then you're going to use construction paper crayons to color it in. Um, in, in construction paper crayons, there's no red, so you'll have to choose a different color than red if you want your an if you wanted your animal to have something on it that was red. It also does not have black. So if you want black, you might have to use a different, you might have to get the regular crayons to color in black. And I think I want my bird black, so I'm going to get a black crayon from the regular colors. But please make sure they don't get mixed in with the construction paper crayons. The regular crayons don't get them mixed in with the construction paper crayons and don't get the construction paper crayons mixed in with the regular crayons. There's my finished bird on colored paper using construction paper crayons. If you choose to do your animal on white paper, you can paint it in. And I want the whole entire paper painted, so that includes the background. I don't want any white showing unless you have a little white for the eye or like you do a panda bear and part of the panda bear is white. And your choices of paint for this, if you want to paint, are temper cakes or watercolor. Your choice. Um, it's completely up to you. Watercolors, you have a more variety of colors. Um, with temper cakes, your colors are limited. You'll need a water basin about halfway filled with water and a paintbrush. Now, if you're going to use watercolor, the way that you use watercolor is you get a puddle of water on top of the color that you're going to use by dipping your paintbrush in the water and pulling it across the edge of the oval paint. And that gets a nice puddle of water in the paint on top of the paint. And then you wiggle the paintbrush gently wiggle it and wiggle the water make sure you're touching the paint underneath the water and then the water changes color into basically paint and then you would paint this on your paper if you wanted to use temper cakes you get your paintbrush wet and you swirl it around on the color that you want to use and that water kind of sits on top of the cake and you wiggle your paintbrush and that water around and then you get paint on your paintbrush and you paint that on your paper I think I'm going to use watercolor. Now since you used permanent marker to outline, you have to be careful when you're painting the edges of your shapes because if there's wet watercolor next to it, it will bleed and run together. So you need to be careful. You want to paint slowly right along the edges. If you have a small area to paint, get a small paintbrush larger areas use a large paintbrush so there's nothing that says you have to have only one paintbrush you can have multiple paintbrushes so now I'm painting this 
magenta, this red violet color, when I get close to the blue violet color, I need to be careful so that they don't touch and over and run into each other and bleed together. So right along the edge, and I did touch right there. So the colors will run and bleed when they touch together. And if you don't want that to happen, you've got to be extra careful when you're painting next to the edge of it, especially when you're using watercolor. But that does happen with temper cakes too. And remember, I said the whole paper has to be painted, has to be colored, so I have to pick a color for the background. Okay, so when you have your animal filling your paper, and you have it colored in, the whole paper's colored, whether you chose colored paper to do construction paper crayons or you chose to paint, then you're finished. This will go on the drying rack. Um, since it's a small paper, you're going to want to put it on a manila paper to put it on the drying rack so it doesn't fall through the wire rack.